Well, we are headed back to Philly for the 1-1 series. As the Raptors lose 94-89 to the Philadelphia 76ers and the officials, if you guys watch my videos on a consistent basis, you will know that I hate ripping officials because it is not an easy job. But when we are watching it go insanely bad so fast, one side one sided, it makes you want to pull your damn hair out. Did the Raptors deserve the victory today? I don't know if the deserved is the right word. Did Philly deserve the victory? I don't know if they deserved it either. It was a grinded out, fight it out game. But in the end, there were very large questionable calls for the 76ers. Anybody who's saying Jimmy Butler did not kick his feet out is blind. He kicked his feet out and he knocks down the three. He gets the end one. It's a four point play. What it should have been and I'm not just saying he's a biased Raptor fan, you hear it all over the place, is that's an offensive foul coming back and those four points come off the board. Big play. We go to the final two minutes of the game. Jimmy Butler driving to the basket. Marcus Saul swats it away. They call it a foul. You look at it. All ball. How are they making this type of call? Why can Jimmy Butler stand there like, ah, in the air, freaking out like a little pansy? It's that type of stuff that really grinds my gears. Watching these late game stupid calls. Look, if things happen in the first quarter and it's a weird call and it's two shots, whatever, who cares? But it's the big moments of the game, the four point plays, the the the, the amount the immense amount of contact on Kawhi Leonard and, and guys like that. How many free throws did Kawhi have today? Seven. How many did Jimmy Butler have? He had eight. And Bede had eight. What are the free throw stats for either team? Well, the Raptors drive, you know, the Philly drives quite a bit, but so do the Toronto Raptors. Okay, well, what were the numbers there? Oh, 26 free throws to 15. What were the fouls um, on either team? 21-18 in favor of, well, I guess it was in favor of Philly, but Raptors had three more fouls. Raptors had three technicals as well, and rightfully so. And you saw after the ball game, you saw Nick Nurse Go over to the officials and start talking to them. You saw Marcus Saul talking to one of the officials. You know why? Because it was bad. Now, you got to give credit where credit is due. Philly did play a really good defensive ball game. They said, all right, we're going to double Kawhi Leonard and make somebody else beat us. And no one else could beat them. Siakam had an off night. What did he shoot? 8 of 22? 9 for 25. Yes, he had 21 points, 8 rebounds, but he did shoot 36% from the field. Kawhi shot 13 to 24. Why? Because he's a freak. But Gasol had 5 points on 1 of 6 shooting, the 1-3 that he made. Lowry had 20. Made a couple big threes there late in the ball game. But then you look at a guy like Danny Green. A possible X factor in the series. And he hasn't really done a whole lot this, this playoff run, really. And today, he had that last shot to tie the ball game, and he missed it. He had three points, five rebounds on one of eight shooting. He was one of six from three. But again, your bench gave you nothing. A total of five, uh, five points from your bench unit. Abaka was uh, one of five shooting. He made two. He had a, he had a one mid-range jump shot that he made. Powell had three points. He was one of three shooting. Fred Van Vliet was 0 of 2, didn't make a shot, and he had 4 rebounds, didn't even get an assist either. The bench has to do something because you look at the um, 76ers bench, Greg Monroe! What? Why not leave it up to a Toronto uh, sports team to have a former player come against you and just grind you out 12 minutes, had 10, 10 points and 5 rebounds? Why not? And James Ennis, 13 points off the bench. And then they had Bolden, who made a big three there late in the game. Do the math, people. That is a total of, what, 26 points from their bench unit? We had five. We could talk about Danny Green's struggles. You could talk about, you know, Jimmy Butler going off. You could talk about the officials. You could talk about this. You could talk about that. But in the end, their bench unit slaughtered the Raptors' uh, second unit. 
Now, are they really missing OG and Anobi? They might be. But he's not coming back anytime soon. So you can't worry about that. But for the first time in a little, quite a while here, the Raptors shoot the ball horrendously. Now, and you only lost by five points. I mean, ideally three. The, the last two points were what was on the uh, foul at the end of the ball game. But you shot 36%. You only shot 27% from three. And you only lost by three points. I know the two points were the free throws. Sure, you know, let's just say five points because people are going to get angry otherwise. So, am I worried? I don't know if worried's the right right word to use. But, I mean, am I upset about this loss? Yeah, because I wanted to be up 2 nothing going back to Philly. The free throws were a problem. Rebounding was an issue. Raptors were, what, minus 17 on the glass? They were minus 1 on the offensive glass, 10-9. to nine. Assists, we only had 20, but you only you made 36% of your shot. You only made 33 field goals in the game. Yeah, the Raptors had 9 steals to their 5, 5 bucks to their 6. Uh, we only had 9 turnovers in the game. They had 18. But the problem was, you weren't making those, those turnovers count, and a lot of those turnovers by the 76ers were dead ball turnovers. So it really wasn't the Raptors getting stops and getting out and run. They just worked themselves tonight. You know, I think I think we can all agree on that. Watching, uh, you know, watching, where is he here? Watching Pascal go 9 of 25. Not used to seeing that. Gasol, 1 of 6. Lowry, 7 for 17. Danny Green, 1 of 8. You're not used to seeing those guys, because let me go through the percentages here. Uh, Dan, uh, Pascal, 36%. Marc Gasol, 16%. Lowry, 41 And Danny Green, 12% from the field. Those aren't numbers we're used to seeing. Now, are we expecting a better performance out of this team again in Philly? Yeah, problem. That ruckus crowd is going to be loud. Their team is going to be jacked up, ready to go. And they just took away home court for the Toronto Raptors. So if the Raptors have gained that back, you got to win one of these two games in Philly. Is it doable? Yes. Will they do it? You make your shots, you're going to win these games. Now, it's great to see the defense continue to do what it's done, though. You hold the Philadelphia 76ers to under 100. So since game one against Orlando, the Raptors have not given up over 100 points. Even in that game, you only give up 104. But for this team moving forward, you need, and I mean need, guys like Danny Green, Fred Van Vliet, Serge Ibaka, Norman Powell, more or less the bench unit, and you throw Danny Green in there to make shots. Period. Kawhi's going to do his thing. He had 35 tonight, 7 rebounds, 6 assists on 13 to 24 shooting. He had to take 10 threes. He was 3 of 10, 6 of 7 from the line. He had a steal in the ball game. He was incredible. But nobody else shot 50% from the field. That's a problem. I'm happy the defense played as good as it did. I'm happy this team did not quit and they fought till the very end and it was just that close. You had that shot by Danny Green right in the final 20 seconds of the game to tie it at least, but he missed it. Actually, I think it was less than 20 seconds. It was, probably, it was in the dying seconds of the game. So it sucks. It really does. And does it suck to see the officials do what they did tonight? Yeah. But in the end, guys, there's nothing we can do now. Philly won game two. Fine. They played pretty damn good defense. They made their shots when they needed to. And Jimmy Butler was damn good. But another common denominator is that Joel Embiid against Marc Gasol has really had issues. Except for that last shot in the ball game where he had that nice little spin move, but he got he had he was in space and he was able to just to drive on Marcus Saul, which is kind of tough to defend, uh, no matter who you are. But whenever whenever Serge Ibaka was guarding Joel Embiid, it was an issue. He was jumping. Look, I, I'll, I'll pay to watch Joel Embiid shoot threes. And you keep him out from the paint and you keep him from driving. I'm totally cool with that. But Serge, stay down. It was a big issue early in the ballgame. You forced Marcus Gasol to play 35 minutes because you could not play Serge in those minutes because, uh, you know, Joel Embiid was just ripping them apart. You know, and, and they, James, look, their bench unit was incredible. And that's the big reason of why they won that ballgame. 
Because when our bench unit was out against their bench unit, uh, we couldn't get anything going. Plain and simple, guys. It was a rough game. Right from the get-go, the Raptors weren't shooting the ball well, and it kind of continued the rest of the ball game. But it's why it happens. You know, I hate to say it, and I hate to say this in playoff time, but it does happen. Teams do have their slow their slow stretches. Now for the Toronto Raptors, you look forward now. Because looking back does nothing but bad. I mean, unless you're going to look at tape and try and improve on it. But other than that, it's not a great ball game. The next game is on Thursday night in Philly. 8 p.m. tip-off. That is a big game for the Toronto Raptors. And this team needs to come out and shoot the rock well. You do that, the Raptors' defense will do their thing. But offensively, they got to get in a groove. They got to make their wide open looks and get back to what they were doing in game one in the previous series. Just make your wide open looks, fellas. You know the crowd's going to be all over you. You know what, Joel Embiid, he's going to make a big shot and he's going to taunt everybody because that's just what he does. Just play your game. Make your wide open looks. And you're going to win then. But, no, obviously easier said than done because if it was easy, they would have done it tonight. And that did not happen. All right, so you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you uh, you enjoyed the ball game overall, it was entertaining, but it sucked the ending. Uh, hit the like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, the officiating, the way this kind of this, the way this game played out for the Raptors. And the, is, are you worried after a ball game like this? Do you think to yourself, well, you know, it's just a sh tough shooting night for the Raptors. We'll get back to at it on Thursday in, in Philly. If that's your philosophy, great. And I'm here with you, because that's the way we have to think, or else you're going to dwell on it and go insane. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this game. Who'd you like? Who'd you not like in today's game? I thought Pascal was forcing up way too many shots. But, again, it happens, and, you know, those are shots he usually makes, though. So, uh, I'm not really going get to uh, get, get upset with him for that, because those are shots he usually makes. And for Pascal, back to the drawing board for the Toronto Raptors, and you go into Game 3... Looking to get in the win column and get get back get in the driver's seat of this series and get that two to one series lead. All right, so guys, I want to hear your guys thoughts on this game, this video, the officiating, who uh, what about Kawhi Leonard's performance, all that stuff, and also uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast. And it's gonna be it's gonna be on Thursday afternoon, so before the game gets going for the Raptors Thursday afternoon podcast edition. Links are in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I'll talk to you guys, Blue Jays edition, tomorrow as they are in L.A. taking on the Angels as the Blue Jays look to uh, continue the nice little run they're on here, looking for their fourth straight victory, 10-07 first pitch. They're in L.A., Clay Buckles versus uh, Griffin Canning. Looking, I think he's in his major league debut there as the Jays start that three-game set in L.A. And as for the Toronto Raptors, game three of this round two matchup, this conference semifinals against the Philadelphia 76ers resumes on... On Thursday night, 8 p.m. tip-off there in Philly. And for the Raptors, you kind of come ready to play. Come out of the gate flying. That's what Philly did. And it, you, it, you just could, couldn't come back. I mean, you didn't get much help from the officials, but they didn't play well nonetheless. You got to come out flying there on Thursday night in Philly. All right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll talk to you guys then.